The regular meeting will come to order August 19, 2014. <clears throat> Moment of silence. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Bast? Here. Cassatt? Here. Mope? Here. Sosar? Here. Monday? Here. First on our agenda, approving the minutes of the previous meeting, July 15th, 2014, work session and regular meeting. Present. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes passed. Proclamations, communications, none. Courtesy of the floor regarding matters on our agenda only. Uh, Grace Cuso, and this is on the agenda because there's some questions. It's a kind of one you just said. What happens? Why isn't Chris here? That, that's I mean, a good question. Well, I think the mayor doesn't want him to attend the meetings, and number two, he's at he has other solicitorships. He has uh, the uh, the school district. He has Cunningham Borough. I think he has 16 or 17 other solutions. But is that a reason? Township. Is, is that a, a reason? reason? No, it's not enough good uh, reason. He should be here. Uh, his responsibility is you take a solicitorship, should be here. Unfortunately, um, and, and we have heard in past times uh, when he had been requested not to be here, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not going to try to assume anything. Anybody sitting here can assume precisely what you want. He should be here. And, and, and for us to, um, I mean, it's just, this is blatant disregard for this governing body, is, as far as I'm concerned. It's just blatant disregard. Well, and you asked him to come? Yes. Okay. I, I've sent him uh, things that I wanted to put on the agenda and I get no response. I, I, my emails go unanswered. In the beginning of the year, because you had hired a council advisor, it was like they were playing games, like he would, would be here. And then as soon as the advisor, because the mayor wouldn't sign the agreement or contract and wasn't paying him, and unfortunately I can't blame him, he can't come either, so Chris started to stop coming. I, I mean, right. isn't there something legally, some legal avenue? Green item down to nothing. Well, that might be a good idea, that's Jackie. What we might, that's what we probably should talk about doing because the line item to whatever he's paid till now and if I think he's already exceeded some, the line uh, item <laughs> Babula pays him it would be he would be violating the law I'll be honest with you I think I believe and, and and I could be wrong in this and and I'll let any of my council members correct me if I'm wrong I do not recall seeing even a bill uh, since I believe it was April I don't know that a bill has come across our table. Now, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I don't recall seeing a formal bill presented to us as council. Uh, so, um, again, I'll just go back on that, that, that it seems as though the city solicitor is the mayor's solicitor, and that seems to be it, and, and I think and that's we're wrong. we're not sure if he exceeded the line item yet or not. We don't know. We don't know. We're not getting any information on See, that. That's very sad, I, I, and I'm very sorry. And I know this isn't really that. My comment here isn't on the agenda. This is what I'm going to say. This leaves every one of you hanging out somewhere in La La Land, and that's it wrong. It leaves us hanging in jeopardy because we need legal representation. We also need Kabula here to explain. Kabula should be here stuff. too. I mean, and and we should be able to. Know well, I'll say the director of administration should be here. Yes. He was not approved nor does he reside in the city, so he doesn't meet the guidelines. And that's, I, that's a line item you should knock down to zero. There's another salary that may have to be cut. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
and one, one quick question on the question that's coming up regarding uh, so advertising for a cellular uh, parking application. Is that just a information type of a study? You're not planning on moving forward with that uh, type of application at this time? We'll have to discuss that when we're yeah, it's, it's for Yeah, it's not going into a contract with anybody. All right, thank you. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mark Rabo, uh, I don't know if, if it, like for the, on the agenda item, uh, ordinance 2014-12 for contracts. Uh, I don't know uh, if the council was made aware, but uh, there was an increase in the tax lien purchases for Luzerne County Redevelopment Authority for last year. Uh, it was, the, there was a resolution made this year at a special meeting of Luzerne County Redevelopment Authority on April 7th of this year in amending the agreement with the city of Hazleton in the amount of uh, the, where the city of Hazleton currently has an outstanding real, real estate tax claims in the amount, uh, estimated amount of approximately $700,000. Now, Last year, under this was under Resolution 4 that, that was amended of 2013 by the Redevelopment Authority, which had it estimated at approximately $305,000, ending in, or 310, excuse me, 310,000 for fiscal year ending December 31st of 2014. So my question is, was this council, as a board member of the Redevelopment Authority of Luzerne County, was this council made aware of this increase? Not that I know of. No. Okay. Has your city solicitor or director of administrator give, given you a copy of the amended sales and purchase agreement? No. Okay. Well, those were my two questions as board member. Now, as resident of this city, uh, I would like to know as far as with the grant uh, resolution 2014-92 uh, where uh, for giving the administrative fee to those who find grants that the city can act on and if, when they acquire. Um, the community development block grants give out administrative fees. And last time I checked, it was in the amount of $165,000. So why is it that grants cannot be given, or administrative fees cannot be given to people instead of just the administration staff and officials or whoever the administration deems worthy of these fees? That's my question. And also, in terms of... Uh, administrative fees for other grants that you can apply through uh, the state and federal government, they do actually have to where you can, the count, like a governing body or anyone in the city government can designate a person or a body, like a nonprofit organization, uh, admi award administrative fees. So my question is like for the gaming grants, I'll give you an example, the great gaming grants, LSA money, they give out uh, administrative fees. So why can't administrative fees be given when, we, when the city applies for gaming grants to a body that, like a nonprofit organization that helps for, I don't know, like homeless people or um, you know, some worthy uh, cause, so. That's my, my questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa, I'm missing that page. Uh, resolution 92? Yes. Does anybody else have it? No. No? 2014 92? Yeah. Or 93. Any other comments from the audience? 293, I'm missing. We'll go on to uh, old business, Look ordinance 2014-10, ordinance allowing on-street parking on the south side of it's Chestnut probably. Street. Okay. Um, Present. I'll 
Second. On the question? Roll call. I'm sorry, who presented and seconded? Uh, Jeff presented. Jeff presented and, and Jean seconded. Okay, thank you. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Uh, that's second reading, uh, third reading? Present. I'll second. On the question? Roll call? Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-11, adding new line items to the City of Hazleton's budget. Second reading. I'll present. Second. You're on the question? Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Third reading? I'll present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Excuse Next. me, Jeff. I'm sorry, Jack. I forgot to make res uh, copies of these two resolutions. Okay, okay, that's okay. Go ahead, we'll take, take a little break. Squeaking on the chair and my feet are, are my legs. David has a broken chair, so my if you should see him fall away during the course of the meeting, it's because it's I'll fix that chair. It's I'll give you a new base. <laughs> this problem and it's not that he shrunk or anything. My legs are going to sleep on me because I'm trying to rest them on the one leg of the of the chair and, and they keep sliding off. Do you want my pillow? I still have my pillow. Well, that'll only raise me up higher. For sure I'll go to sleep. I do. I do. A little light humor, Sylvia. A little light humor. <laughs> we can go on longer because Jack got us new chairs, all right? And we are no longer tortured sitting here. So it's his fault that we're here forever. That would work. That would For work. some people. Uh, she'll, she's done. It happens. Not to worry. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, <clears throat> next on our agenda, Ordinance 2014-12, repealing Ordinance 9628 and Ordinance 997 and amending Ordinance 8811, Ordinance 965, Ordinance 2011-11, Chapter 4, Article 6, 426, and Chapter 16, Article 16 of the Code of the City of Texas, regarding procedures for the reception, opening, and awarding of bid contracts. Second reading. I'll present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Fast? No. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Uh, third reading? I'll present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Fast? No. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. So sorry? Yes. Monday? Yes. That's it for ordinances, resolutions, none, new business, ordinance 2014 13, or ordinance allowing on stream parking on Laurel Street. First reading? Present.
I'll, I'll second it just for discussion, but I know, Jeannie, you had some questions about it. Well, if I could, first of all, um, I, I, I know that we passed one on Chestnut Street. Um, as I look at the, the next, uh, actually the next four, um, I've got a bit more questions to ask and really to investigate and ponder on allowing the parking on, on uh, Laurel Street and the other designated streets that are coming. Um, I, whether we need to take you them, I, I would just, if it's okay with everybody, I would, I would make a motion that we table this for further investigation. Yes, and, and I, this is the first time I'm seeing it. I would like yeah. to drive by and, okay. and, okay. and, and maybe I, I talk think to the chief. I think there's some, ex some so extra. I would like to table these. That's going to be a suggestion okay. of mine. Okay. Shall we okay. take them one at a time, a nonetheless, and then we'll yeah. do that? Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, no. the table. Yeah. So, motion to table. Okay. I'll the second. It. Jean? On the motion to table. Yeah, on the motion to table. Uh, Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, ordinance 2014 14, allowing on street parking on the west side of Pine Street. Motion to table. I'll present it. Oh, we have to present, present it first. It first. No, but I'm just saying. Second. Yeah. Well, we'll do that. We have to yeah. do them each at a time. I'll second. Um, you motion the table. Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion the table. Uh, roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Ordinance 2014 15, ordinance allowing on street parking on Wyoming Street. Present. Second. Second. Uh, on the question? Uh, motion the table. Second. Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Ordinance 2014 16, Norris allowing on street parking on the north side of Walnut Street. I'll present. Reading. Second. On the question? Motion to table. Second. Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Maybe we could do is we could have uh, the city engineer, whoever it Don't is at the one. time, <laughs> you know, get a, a map of a map of uh, what they're doing in, in, in each area and and uh, the surrounding parking. The effects. Maybe yeah. the effects. get a, a diagram for us. Uh, in a parking study that yeah. we did before. Well, maybe way. Lisa, send uh, this, the city engineer a request that we'd like a, a, a diagram of the parking around these areas. Okay. And uh, the study that they did before. There was a there. If I could be so bold, I think, and I don't recall um, a, a more recent study. I do know there was a parking study back in, uh, and obviously times have changed. But there was a parking study done around 1994, I believe it was. Uh, that may be the last full-fledged parking study that was done. But um, Lisa, you may you, you may want to uh, check with. Uh, I don't know. No, maybe that's in our records anyway. Maybe, yeah, maybe but it may be something study. to check and look into and see what they had been saying at that time. Uh, 1994? I think it was Lisa, about 94. Maybe what you can do, whatever parking study we have, instead of making copies of it, scan it yeah. and send it to us. Okay. The latest parking study. Okay. Whatever we have. Yeah, just don't make copies of it. Just scan it and email it to us. Okay. Finish did just do one in April. There's a new, there's, they did one for the downtown. Finish did. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, I, are we, when are we going to find out? I, I didn't get it from there. I, <laughs> well, no. th this one was a comprehensive, I know. In 90, I believe it was 94, uh, there was a comprehensive done in the of the entire city, uh, you know, covering thing, places like uh, Alter, up uh, in the Heights, uh, uh, downtown Broad Street, and all the surrounding areas uh, with the parking lots and the meters and everything. And so I think, you know, it, it would be of a benefit if at least you know, again, you have something to work off of. 
it's not then then you may not have to reinvent the entire wheel so it would be something that right. to okay. help okay uh, okay, next res resolutions, resolution 2014-88, a resolution endorsing the request of the joint governing body of Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport that Pennsylvania Department of Transportation commission a study in the feasibility of a regional transportation authority for Luzerne and Lackawanna counties. Present it. We'll second. On the question? Uh, on the question, uh, let me just let me just mention this because I've been been hearing about this for the last couple of, of months. I know the county had been looking at this, and the county is going to go ahead with this, whether Hazelton is involved in it or not. And I'd rather have Hazelton involved in it. It does not necessarily mean that we have to agree with everything that goes on within the study. But if it's going to be done, and it's going to be done for the entire county anyway, why would Hazelton not want to ride? in on with the same resolution uh, an agreement with this to say go ahead it's free it is not going to cost us anything and therefore I think we would be foolish not to it's, it, this is just a study for right. you know transportation throughout the county exactly and I mean I agree with you that would be foolish if we didn't you know go along with it I mean we are still part of the county right I mean <laughs> and uh, and like you said we don't have to agree with everything you say but we, sh you know, I think it's a good idea that you know we sign on with going through with this study, so that we're at least part of the study. Good, uh, you know, not uh, not left out. Yeah, because we want to make sure we get the same information that they have, so uh, we can make proper decisions. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call. Bast. Yes. Cassatt. Yes. Mope. Yes. Sosar. Yes. Mundy. Yes. Next is resolution 2014-89, approving the hiring of a police officer in accordance with the police civil service rules. Jessica Levine. Second. On the question. Chief, could you come up to the podium, please? Thank you. I just have one quick question. Do we have to make any changes to our locker rooms or bathrooms or do we have to? Yeah, we'll have to build or have a female locker room. That, uh, the planning for that is in the process right now. I'm anticipating. Do you know how much it might cost? Though? No, I have no idea how much it'll cost. Um, until such time that we have a female locker room, she'll just change in the ladies room in another well i wouldn't use the ladies room we'll either use the interview room or a private office or um, most of our officers come to work in uniform already but there would have to be requirements for a female locker room is that going to be okay with her to change not in the locker room for right now. i think for right now for i mean there's no doubt in my mind that Okay. I, I mean, the woman wants to move here from Arizona. I'm sure if I told her for a month or two she'll be changing in another place, that won't be a problem. There's no doubt in my mind. How, how long has she been a, a police uh, woman? I believe she's a police officer out there for four or five years in uh, Tucson. She's originally from Dorrance Township. Her family is still here, mother and father and she wants to relocate back to the Hazelton area. Is she a veteran? No, she has no veteran uh, status. She did finish number one, and that was the in, same in, person. In every That's right. area of the test and an overall score of number one. Yeah. Well, she'll also be able to uh, help out the police department, let's say, in the ability to do pat-downs on female yeah, there's a lot of reasons why adding a female just adds to our diversity. Um, not only will we no longer have to call on other departments um, if we have a female working, um, sometimes undercover operations, other times just with community um, relations, crowd control, a lot of times you introduce a female police officer into an environment and it immediately calms down where men can 
rile it up. I mean, there's just a lot of good that comes out of a diverse police department, and I think this is truly our first step in the right direction. No, I congratulate you I, on that, well, Chief. I think, I think this, is, this is a real positive move. I'm, thank I'm you. proud. Uh, if, if we vote yes, I'm proud to be able to hire and put out on the road the first female patrol officer. I think it's great for us. You know, her badge number will be 180, and I believe that this is truly heading in another direction with our department. I think, it's, I think it'll be excellent for us. Well, we also, down the road, probably will maybe be now considering opening it up to more women as well. It, it's never not been open. This is the first time that I'm aware of, at least in recent years, that a female has applied and done so well. Now, this- Anderson did have a, fem a female right. officer here. So. But she actually never went on the road. She was hired and then never went on the patrol. Um, so this will be, when she comes here, she's already um, took or taken the state uh, municipal police officer education training commission test and she passed it without even going to an academy simply because of her knowledge Background. from being another police officer so she's ready to hit the road when she when she steps through the door maybe more people will be applying now sure so the locker room is won't right. just be for one individual it could possibly correct it, it, it will be the size to have at least four or five lockers in it. Um, right now, I have uh, Mike reviewing with labor and industry since a the, the city hall already has a handicapped bathroom. So therefore, we believe that there's an exemption that the city could get where even though we're installing a new bathroom, since a wheelchair will never be used in the female locker room, we won't need a handicapped bathroom. Um, so I'm checking, I mean, there's some red tape of our permits and licenses before we just go throw some walls up. I have a question. Would any of the seizure money be able to go towards like, uh, the building of the locker room? That's a great question. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that improvements to a police department are one thing that can be paid with seizures. So there's no doubt that you know, the, the, the money will be able, we could use seizure. One money. other quick question, Chief. Does, does she uh, have to take a physical? She already took a physical. She has passed everything except city council's approval. She's passed her psychological, she's passed her physical, she's passed her background, she's passed her, um, the, all of the requirements to get to be number one on the list. The only thing is that if, and I've already spoken with her, if you vote yes tonight, I call her, she gives her two week notice at Tucson, and she'll be here to start September. Okay. So, and, and when she is here, she's going to be living with her mother and father, which puts her within 10 miles of the city when she starts, which is um, the second, be it further resolved, so that I'm sure that she's within the 10 mile requirements. In dorms? Correct. That's 10 miles? 7.8 air miles. Oh. Well, well, exactly. <laughs> I, I got a question for you. The, the financially, I, I'm going to vote. Well, I'm voting yes, but I just have. Okay. Uh, she's 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 filling in for a retired officer that made sixty four thousand last year base. Now that officer also required a thirty one thousand dollar buyout, which would count against his. Uh, Salary. So the line item is actually filled for his. Now her base would be 70% of that, of the, the new hire of 50,000, 57,000, correct? So her, her base is like 30. No. So it comes 30, out to 40,000. 40, 40, it would be 40,300 40, to start. Is start that? Right. So my, 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 my whole, I guess, point is I know that. Can you put into the budget, because yours, yours are the only department in the budget that did not go over a line item last year. So I, I Thank guess you. what I'm trying to get at is next year, can you build in the cost in your line item, if anybody is, is a potential of retiring, the, uh, the whole thing that goes with section 20-2-1 of the police contract, the, um, all the stuff that's required the city to give 
to a new officer. I just happen to have the budget with me. Um, uh, where, there, go ahead. in a specific line item, are you talking about in like 5100? Or I'm sorry, 5102? In a line item? I, and, and it was my understanding that the buyout is not part of the salary, although I have no idea where the buyout line item falls anyway. Um, whether it is or, or not, I'm willing to do anything that you tell me you'd like to see in a line item anyway, so suggest a way. Well, that 31000 would go to that line item. I confirmed it with Tom today. Um, but he said there will be some money left over from reimbursement from Leonard and the other undercover. That Chris Orozco. Yeah. So there'll be a little bit left over that it would wash. But my thing is, in the future, I would like you to build in a line item that would uh, account for all the stuff that's required for us to give. Because I, I guess a new hire would cost couple thousand dollars in new equipment right so I would like you to put that into your line item into your budget next year in case if there's a possibility of somebody retiring okay. um, I understand what you're saying but I don't know that I understand what you're asking <laughs> only because Lieutenant Leonard was unanticipated and Chris yes. Orozco was unanticipated so because of it do you want me to when, estimate when you, what you, it would cost if somebody did retire? Yes, and put that. If, if this, when you, when you, when she, when she's hired, you're going to have invoices for all this stuff. Right. I want you to put that number into a line item for next year in case we have an unexpected retire. Yeah, but he's not going to. Why would he? I won't know what their buyout is, though. Yeah, I mean, not the buy, no, 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 not the buyout. The high. The all. This, all every new officer. He could, he could give you that. You want to know what it's going to cost me to bring her on board? Her on, yes. $4,700. Yeah. Is that what it is? $4,700? 4, $4,700. Okay. Yeah. yeah I see it in the contract it says in, that we have to provide all these things. Right. 40, we're up to $4,700 when you add a $1,200 bulletproof vest and then the standard issue of everything that needs given that's, to her. That's what I'm, I would like you to make a line item for that next year. Okay. Cause, now, cause I'm, yeah. I'm thinking if you, just so you're aware, um, in the... I thought it was in here, but I, I understand what you're asking for. Now, you're asking for, if I hire somebody new, what is the city going to spend yes. to outfit that person to hit the road? Yeah, because in okay. Section 20 of their contract, there's this whole page of stuff that we have to give them. Yep. And there's 60, in the annual uniform allowance, right. no matter what day they come on, they get that $600. Are you on page too. 21 of the contract? I just have Clothing the I, allowance? I, I cut and paste, yeah, yes. Yeah, we have to okay. understand that, too, even though it might be a new hire, some of those things might be paid for out of the seizure money, so it's not still being granted. Like, he could pay for the vest out of the seizure money or things like that. Could you, can you? I can't budget no, for... Saying, yeah. Right, so if I First budget for scenario. it, I can't pay for it out of seizure money. If it's a line item in my budget... It's illegal for me to use seizure money because it appears to be budgeted for, and then it's supplantation. And that means we have to provide extra income, so I'm not sure I'm too happy about that. I understand what you mean. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it might be. Come out of seizure money. It, there might be more things with the seizure money that you could utilize. Uh, you're talking about uh, repairing. Uh, part of the facilities of, of headquarters to accommodate um, uh, 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 this new police officer. Uh, there may be other things that you're going to need to foresee in the future. Uh, and, and what we're suggesting to you is that um, uh, seizure money may very well be able to be utilized to defray some of those expenses. Sure. And that way it doesn't have to come out of the general fund because that that is something that we seizure money as long as we, right. we, I agree. we don't wholeheartedly it, it agree. Works, it works, and it's a good wash for everybody. And I understand what Jeff's trying to do yeah. because we're prepared. Well, my, my big thing is we have right now we are over the budget by th 36 different line items are over the budget. The Chiefs is the only department that is not. Psst. Second year in a row. Modesty, second modesty, second year in a row. Modesty. So I'm just, it's, it's a line item that I think should be in there, a new hire, because it's, we said 47. Incidentally, since you brought it up, 
Not that I keep track of numbers, but as of the 1st of August, we were 211 days into the year, which is 58.2% of the year gone. And with 58.2% of the year gone, I still have 49% of my budget left when I should only have 41.2% of my budget left. So I'm still well on track of being... We're going to have to take a vote on not that. Not that I keep track. I, well, and I, you know, but, but here's one of the things too, Chief. Maybe there is something, if there are anticipated, obviously that you would work into the budget. Uh, these unanticipated, it, it's you, nobody expects anybody to have a crystal ball. But if you are anticipating, I think maybe to accommodate what Jeff is saying at this point, uh, that we work those into the budget sure. so that we know precisely where we're going. We have three as years. People, we have three years until I anticipate a retirement based on um, badge number 122, Lieutenant Sapovsky. Badge number 120. Uh, I'm sorry, 121, Lieutenant Sapovsky. 122, uh, Sergeant Trey, and 128, Sergeant Tessitore. They were hired, still able to retire under an old contract at 25 years, and they aren't gonna hit that 25 years for three more years. So I don't anticipate a retirement for three years. But well, let's let it go for any, now. Well, it's, it's just a suggestion for the budget, because they're working on the budget now. I have now. one more question. I know uh, uh, Orozco was, spoke Spanish. Is, are we losing our only Spanish speaker? Uh, it's an interesting question. He's gone, and we lost, at the time, our only Latino Spanish-speaking person that was fluent. I have, uh, you know, another one or two officers that can limp speaking Spanish. I'm also uh, fortunate enough to be able to say, after a uh, career with the Tucson, Arizona Police Department, we're bringing a female in that can speak Spanish. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, I would, I would again, she might not be the Chris Orozco fluent Spanish, but she has a good leg up on anybody else as far as her ability to speak Spanish. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. What does she run the 40 in? <laughs> <laughs> She's faster That's than I am. <laughs> That's Clint Eastwood. She's a, a triathlete oh, in her spare time. I, I was yeah, just kidding. she is just... All that and then some, and I'm proud if we, if we vote to get her in, I will be proud to have her as a member of this department. I think she's gonna be a great asset. In other words, she runs faster than I do. She runs faster than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. If you'll excuse me. I'd like to go call her. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is resolution 2014-90, a resolution exempting a veteran from uh, real estate taxes for the year 2014. Presented. I'll, I'll second. On the question. Well, I have one question. I guess a lot of people don't know about the program. I guess it's through the county that if you're, uh, I think it's a 100% disabled veteran, you can get your taxes abated, I think all three. Yes. It's a special, mm -hmm. you have to apply right. for it. It's, it's, you know, it's not just automatic. You have, to, you have to go through some hoops to get it. But a, a lot of people, you know, uh, maybe the television or the... They need to know. It, you know, to let people know about that. It's a program that, uh, that they, don't, uh, they don't promote, but it's available for veterans. If you're 100% disabled, they could um, abate their taxes. Uh, any other questions? Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-91, an agreement to supplement the City of Hazleton's Code of Ordinances. Present. Second. On the question, I, I just have one thing, Jeff. I know this isn't a bad idea, but 
I don't know how the, you know this would save us money, which obviously, I mean, it's a convenient thing, and, and it's not a bad idea. And, and maybe if we had a lot of money to do it, I'd, I'd be for it. But I would like to not do this and, and put this money towards our pothole machine. They're, I know the, the, they're thinking about possibly buying it, and maybe this will give them some incentive if we tell them to use this money to buy a pothole filling machine that could fill potholes all winter, which uh, the city desperately needs. We want to take people up the street. I want to, we had a presentation with a, a, a machine. Yeah, you can go ahead. We could explain it. Go ahead. That the city garage did, and it's a, for an asphalt machine, and you can check it out. It's by the animal shelter where they laid the patches down. It's to recycle asphalt that was previously used, and we have tons of it because just the Broad Street Corridor project alone. And uh, it seemed that the garage people were very satisfied with it. I think the mayor and, and uh, Frankie Vito was very satisfied with it. And it will save us a ton of money because we don't have to go out and purchase raw material. We have this material to utilize. We borrowed the uh, machinery from Kingston. They brought it in and they did a display for us, which they had in a standard speaker. And um, we think it's a wonderful idea. And Jeff, I don't have anything against what you're trying to do with the code book, but as you said, we're in the hole right now. And I think this is something, and Jackie's right, that we need to focus on and take care of our potholes because that is a very large problem. And I think it, it, what they could do is the, they could, the, any the, day that they don't, or whatever their other duties are, there's a big pile of, of macadam that they could use that any time they're not doing anything, if we have that machine, they could run over there and even in the dead of winter yes, be right. filling potholes. Well, I, I'm, all in, I'm all in favor of the pothole machine, but there should be enough of that s commercial storm uh, sewer transmission fee coming in yet that we should be able to pay for that. They used that to pay for the, ten, the last five years of loader payments, which the last payment should be coming up at the end of the year, well, we should have enough money to pay the 20000 we have 20, to find out exactly what's on in that account. Yeah. But, honestly, okay, well, this Jeff, isn't about the pothole machine. Cabula I understand. Hasn't, get, hasn't given us the information on it, all well, right? They got an we extra don't know where the sewer okay. transmission money is. We don't well, it's know if there's uh, anything left. Well, it, uh, well, there's probably not, but this... Well, well and, Jeff, and, this, and, this uh, might give them incentive to... to to maybe buy the machine. I know they're thinking about it. If I, if I could, one of the things that we just did tonight was to, um, in one of the last ordinances, uh, to change an ordinance, as a matter of fact, on the uh, uh, bids and uh, uh, the opening of the bids and who controls the bids and so forth, um, to, to uh, reprint a city code right now uh, when you are still in the process of changing some of the things that you know you need to change, uh, might not be, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, again, I but think. But the city code changes every meeting. Well, the city code changes, but. It, but we, I mean, this is something that I wanted to do a couple years ago. Some of the, of the, of the old codes down. right now. And it's I'd just, rather use some of that money if we can to fill in. It's just some of the, the I mean, holes that we I mean, have. I understand that. It's just that the, it's so cumbersome when you're trying to find anything. Well, and, 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 and I guess, it's, yeah, it is. You know, this. because you, you have 12 years now of ordinances that have changed other ordinances that can go back 40 years, 50 years or more. Yeah, and uh, and it just, it's, this, it's, I'm sorry. I agree. With this contract, it only costs us $25 to change an ordinance if we want to change it next year, the year after. It's only $25 to change an ordinance. But the point is we keep changing them constantly, and, and I agree. Well, I'm not disagreeing with either one of you. It, it, it would be beneficial, but as you said, we're in the red. By the end of the year, this money that could be used towards something else won't be. And we, we right now have to watch every single nickel that we have, and that's the problem. This creates for us, I think, a, a little bit of a, it isn't that it's not needed. I think one of the questions becomes, what becomes needed more? Exactly. 
Um, it's and, really not. This, I mean, I love the pothole no, machine. No, I, I understand but what, what you're saying. This isn't a pothole but, machine versus city code. No. This oh, was no, in the budget no. for the last three years. It keeps getting put off. Uh, yeah. It's $4,000. No, um, it's half price of what they wanted to spend last year. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not, not, I'm I'm not suggesting. First. No, no, I'm first. not suggesting it's the pothole machine only. I'm suggesting that this city right now, uh, as the administration is taking it, and, and I've been told and we've all been presented with the idea that the city is in the black and the city is going to continue in the black, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, and, and, and this is just simply my perspective. This is not on an expert accounting evaluation, but I believe that the city still is on an untenable uh, uh, debt that, that we are facing and we are going deeper into a hole rather than solving our problems. And it's not, it's not one thing. Uh, it, this is not a, 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 an A versus a B. This is a total picture. This is a debt that the city is facing right now and it becomes a, a situation where, where does the money best get spent? And I think we gotta fill all of the holes that are needed as far as the debt that this city is incurring because I do not believe, and, 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 oh. and I will be happy to eat my words uh, uh, in, uh, on Broad Street if this city ends up in the black at the end of the year, but I don't, I don't truly believe that. I don't think the city's ever ended up in the black uh, for the last number of years. And I agree with you that we're in a you know, tenable situation financially, and some of the things you know, going back through January were that there were all these ideas that were gonna come out and I have still haven't heard any well, of, of ways to, to improve. It's a little difficult when we have to have a court battle over what budget is being Well, you can do other things besides just worry about the budget. Uh, you no, can, can you do more than one thing at a time? There's things that are- uh, Obviously, I guess not. No, and don't be a smart aleck now, come on. I can be just as much as you are, Jean. You know what? We don't just need as this. Much this as is you one are. of the reasons that we have problems in the city because we can't sit down and talk civilly. Yeah. Now, what I'm just, trying to well, okay, well, just, wait, just wait, like, wait, just wait, like wait, the wait, fact wait, that I'm, I'm glad wait, that you're wait, here. I mean, I'm glad you're here tonight, Gene, because getting carried and away. You wanna, you, okay, you want to, you want to put them computerized, but the mayor doesn't even follow the codes. No, can, <laughs> he doesn't care about the codes. Can, can the we mayor's call, not the only one that concerns, okay. though. Can we call for a, a question at this okay, point? I think it's best that we go to a question on the vote. Yeah. Okay. Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? No. Sosar? No. Monday? No. Next is 2000, resolution 2014-92, resolution authorizing the preparation of solicitation of requests for proposals for independent grant writing services to assist the city of Hazleton. Present. Second. On the question. Where is the money coming from to pay for this? No, and that, that becomes okay. a good question again. I, I, I would and agree with you I have no idea where, uh, I don't, I know there's nothing in the budget for a grant writer. It's, it's, it's asking you if anybody would want, somebody from the public just wanted to come to council and say, I found this grant for a playground, can I write it? They write it. It's not, asking, we're not paying them anything. It's the freelance. Well, that's my intention. I, I sent it twice to Chris Lesser for his opinion on it, and I never got it back from him. But he didn't. He not, didn't comment on it. He yeah. didn't comment on it. He didn't bring anything um, <laughs> twice. See, um, and, and, but it's, and it's not. I, I'm not. It's not. It's. I, it's I'm meant not to against this either, Jeff. But what I'm thinking is, I wouldn't mind passing it as long as we put in there that the grant writer would pay all the expenses, and if he's not reimbursed by either success. the grant or the city. He doesn't get paid. Period. That's it. It would be. A, it would be could depend on the success. Yeah, I, um, and he doesn't. What I want to put in there is assurances that it will not cost the city any money, and the grant writer will not get paid if uh, if we don't pay him or or and the grants can't pay for grant writing. We, did you read that letter from Dolan? Yeah, I read it, and yeah, I don't think it was right, but. One of the things that, that I know, and there's, there's a lot of institutions, and again, I'll only go back to what I'm familiar with at, at, at my school. There are, are, there are professional grant writers, and there are grant writers, e even if you have somebody who does it part-time. 
uh, normally speaking, the person who writes grants anymore, and being a grant writer, you have to have a certain amount of money that you have actually been able to obtain uh, in grants before you can call yourself a grant writer. But uh, they, the grant writer knows the buzzwords. Anybody can write the grant, but you're not going to necessarily get anything unless you know the actual, quote, buzzwords for that particular grant, whether it be recreation, whether it be parking, whether it be whatever. Um, and, and these people know that. Now, one of the things that they work on oftentimes is a commission. Uh, and, and, and I don't have a problem, in fact, even dealing with that. Uh, if, if you get a grant, then you are based, your salary gets based on how much money you're able to bring into a city, uh, into a school, into a, 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 a business. That's normally how it ends up getting worked on, and that part I don't have a problem with. Um, the only problem that I have with this one, if you want the truth, is is that it this this is a little wide open because what it says is to anybody who feels they want to write the grant that you 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 know go ahead and write it, and if you get it, then you know fine, and then we'll see if we can pay you or we can't. There's a lot of ifs in there yet. I, I would prefer to see somebody, whether it be a part-time, whether it be somebody who's even a volunteer, to say, I'll do this and I'll take my commission. And, well, that's and, and, and that's, that's, that's how it will be. Well, we could, we could maybe add something in there that the we grant could writer maybe will tweak be this a little bit for all costs associated with the grants and the city will not be liable for any costs associated with the grant. As long as we're protected, I, I don't care who writes grants for us. Let's I don't care. I don't care who comes and writes a grant, but we can't. No, the, can't afford to pay them. No, we're not going to pay them. It shouldn't cost us anything. It's yeah. just if you want to come and write it. Uh, yeah. Well, I, Jeff, I'm. This would be. Like this said. would be actually in the writing and the obtaining of the grant. This wouldn't just be in a finding it or be writing it, this would be actually in the obtaining of the grant itself. If we receive, if we grant, receive money. If, if they come to council and say, hey, we found a grant, there's a grant available for $10,000 for a playground swing, Do you, can I write it and present it to council? They write it, take it home, write it, present it to council, we think it's a good idea, we send it in. If we, win, if we, if we get the money, then they would get part of the... Yeah, but that, that Dolan... I don't, the, I don't really like said. that idea. I don't think that that's really... Well, the, the one... The one uh, letter that was sent by a grant writer for Luzerne. Did the, you get the letter? She Dolan? was going off that? of what the mayor said in the newspaper, which oh. the newspaper represented it wrong. He didn't yeah. put it in there correctly. Well, she had said that they, they can't get paid from the grant, that they, they don't get paid that way. They get part of the commission. Yeah. Well, they get commission. They, they get don't get it administrated. They get a commission. The, the newspaper used paid. It's commission. Yeah. From the, city. the commission comes from the city then. It comes out of the grant. It comes out of the grant itself. The grant. Yeah. Well, do you, this or what do you want to do here? Well, let's I'd like to reword it, it and maybe have Chris look at it. Well, let's just we'll we'll reword it and bring it back. Why don't, we, yeah, why don't we table or this and reword it? I'm not against it. I'll table it and let him and eventually maybe, maybe reword it so that, so that Chris could look at it too. And maybe he'll get back to us this month. And maybe. Uh, Our next month. That's what I mean. Reword it so month. that people could. Hey, I'm not against people volunteering to write a grant. That's. But. There's no guarantee that we could pay them. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't pay. It would come, if if they would get it, they would get we something. Well, but I'm thinking most people would just say, "Hey, I could help the city out." And well, there might be people out there that are altruistic. I agree. But, okay, but I, I'll we make just, a motion to table. We just don't want to be on the hook. Yeah. Okay. I'll table. It. I'll make a motion to table. Second, on the motion to table. Fast. Yes. Cassatt. Yes. Mope. Yes. Sosar. Yes. Monday. Yes. Uh, next is resolution 2014-93, a resolution authorizing the preparation and solicitation of requests for proposals for services to assist the city of Hazleton in identifying and introducing back into the tax rolls properties that are not currently listed on the tax rolls. I'll present. I'll second. I have just one or two questions, Jeff. I've been talking to some people and companies that do this and there's a possibility that we could get it done with no cost to the city, so I might like to table this till I'm, we're, I'm done talking to them, so that it, it might not cost us anything. 
There's a possibility. This is only asking for a right proposal. I know. So they could, I by know. the time the well, city puts it together, we don't have to well, accept this, any this, bids. This would, uh, I mean, this would put to. something in motion to the city and, and, and the mayor. Of course, uh, who knows what the mayor That's might not even do anything. But, but that's just asking the administrator to write up a proposal yeah. to put out there. Well, uh, like I said, I'd only need maybe to the next meeting to find out whether this would work, but uh, I'd like to table it to the next you, meeting. Do you, you have a time certain that you might be able to know that by? Well, the next meeting. Okay, okay. Well, then, then I'm fine. If it's only going to be then in the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, I'll table, table. Why don't, why, why don't we do that? Okay. Uh, on the, the motion to table. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Uh, roll call. Fast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Uh, next is resolution 2014-94, granting approval to advertise request for proposals for a cell phone payment system for parking. Well, we should at least talk about it. I'll present it. <laughs> huh? I'll present it. I'll second it. On the question. Uh, Go ahead. I mean, I saw the presentation that the company made, and, it, and it's not such a bad idea. I, I, uh, the, a lot of senior citizens who don't have smartphones cannot use it, although there's some that do, but there's a lot of the younger people that probably will take advantage of it. Uh, it's more of a convenience thing than anything. Uh, and I saw a demonstration of it uh, a while back. And uh, I mean, it, all this is, to, is, is a request for a proposal too, but uh, I don't know. What, what do you think? Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm looking at, at the residents of the city of Hazleton. Um, there are some that use smartphones. There's a lot of people who don't use uh, cell phones at all. There's a lot of people who uh, I know, I have got good friends who, who have the old traditional flip phone yet and they can make a phone call with it uh, and, and, and text a little bit, but that's probably about it. You could, okay, um, now getting back and, to your flip and, phones, I, I had asked that <laughs> question to, to the person who gave, and they said flip phones, no problem, you call an 800 number, that's it. So flip phones are no problem. Well, You don't I, need a smartphone. But, but do I, I my, mean, my questions uh, are, I've, is what happens if you, if you don't have a, a cell phone, or I, the meters, what happens? Yeah, the meters are still there. Yeah, I mean, but that's if they well, put but it you in know what? that have meters. And, 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 and I'll yeah. still go, go as far as to say, I, I, I've had to do some traveling this last week. I've been, uh, I, I went down, and it's not, you want to talk about an isolated little example. Uh, but even places like Baltimore that don't have meters anymore, that have the places where you can get, put your uh, uh, paper stub on. You, you put a paper yeah. stub in your window. You get. Um, a, I think that would be a better card. idea than this. Well, and I was just thinking about that. It's it's a little bit labor intensive because you have to have somebody who looks at the time of when that person is parked there. But the that at least you know it's it has the same idea. I'm not ready in Hazleton, Pennsylvania yet to start using phones to pay my bills uh, for parking. Um, you, you, I mean, there's, there's always been, and I am old school, I will, will admit, of, of using computers to pay my bills, to do anything like that because of hackers. All you had to do was go to the, to the television today to see that hospitals are now being hacked uh, for information. Uh, that scares the bejeebers out of me. And how many people really in Hazleton right now are paying bills on their computer? I know that there's a percentage that do, but I know a lot of percentage of people who don't. And, and that bothers me, uh, that we're going to put our parking in the hands of, in a lot of cases, not in all, but in, in a lot of cases of this. So I'm, I'm not really ready. There's a lot more that I would prefer to know about this uh, before and, and and I just don't feel comfortable going this route yet. I'm sorry. I, I don't Go think ahead. I don't think Hazleton's ready for this yet. Like you said, you went to Baltimore and they don't even have a system, and they're a big city. Um, 
we've primarily made of senior citizens. I mean, a lot of them are good on their phones. I'm not one of them, okay? So I would be probably paying a meter in Detroit rather than in Hazleton <laughs> if you had to depend on me to do it, okay? And that's, that's no word of lie. But be, besides that, then if there's areas where we don't have meters, then they could be strictly by cell phone, which is now kind of discriminatory because if you're not good on a cell phone, you can't park your car there. So there's a lot of things that have to be looked into before we would do this, and I don't think Hazleton's ready for it quite yet. I would, I, you uh, know um, what, if we... It, I'm kind of interested in finding out what the, what the proposal would say. This is a different, this, they didn't name a company here that he brought in to give us a presentation. Yeah. I'm and, and yeah, this, this I'm, isn't. Uh, that's a, that's we're not voting. Yeah, I mean, to, just to see what it I'm says. See. I'm, yeah. I'm willing to listen. Voting to put it put it in. We're voting to see what is out there, and maybe, you know, you didn't see the presentation. I saw it, and I thought that hey, this, you know, for parking for people to get tickets that don't have change. I, I kind of liked it, uh, but, but you have to check yourself in and check yourself out. So if you're on the phone, you have to get off the phone to check yourself in, and you have to get off the phone to check yourself out. If you don't, and you pull away. I, I, I'm, I don't really like that part. I'm not crazy but I'm kind of curious it. to see what, what they would give us but, commission But as far wise. as that presentation went, it was made at the chamber because we requested it to be done at council, yes. all right? Well, they couldn't and make they, it at that they time, yeah. they couldn't accommodate us, all yeah. right? So now it was like whoever could make it down to the chamber could get to see this thing, this proposal. Uh, and I don't think we're ready for it yet. I just don't. I mean, that's my opinion. Well, I, I mean, like I said, we're not putting it in. Or we're not implementing it. It's just getting some companies to make a proposal to say what they would what they would do. And it, it's not necessarily the one that made the presentation. They would go out to all companies. There's a whole bunch of companies that do this. But... Uh, I'm going on Amazon right now and buying something. One <laughs> click. Yeah, well, you're, you're uh, Right now, I click. Well, how about we vote on it? Savvy. But that's okay. one of our other problems, because they have a direct conversation with you. you I have know. You have to look around. I know. Your phone. I know. Okay. Any other questions? Question. Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? No. Sosar? No. Monday. <laughs> well, I got a coin for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next is resolution 2014-95, resolution certifying the local match for state operating financial assistance for fiscal year 2014 and 15. Uh, present. I presented I'll, it. I'll second. Jeff seconded it on the question. Yeah. Yeah, you could come up to the podium uh, and just explain what, what, what we're doing here. Okay, in the years past, uh, Luzerne County would give us a percentage of our state grant we get every year. This year, we should have got from Luzerne County 134346 which they refused to give it to us this year. Last year, they refused LCTA. They didn't give it to LCTA last year, but they gave them a partial this year. We have a reserve local match account and in that account, we have $552,031. And that was a buildup throughout the years of local match that we didn't use. Now, local match is used for, um, like I said, a percentage of the grant money we get. But years past, Luzerne County used to give Hazleton Transit a flat fee of $150,000 every year. Up until two years ago, they stopped, and they just gave us the required amount. That's why we have such an abundance in our local match funding. Now, normally this, this reserve in there would be used for capital purchases, buses and whatnot, because if we use uh, state money for um, buses, we have to match 10%. If we use federal funds, we have to match 20 or 18 to 20%. So we have an abundance so we can cover our own local match since it was given to us as a local match, so it's in our account so we could use that. Um, so it's 134,346 we have to put up of our own money in our 1415 fiscal year. We have three buses coming in and two bus shelters we're putting up. 
So our local match we have to take also is 30,000. So that'll leave us with $387,471 in our local match reserve. Ralph, what happens when we run out of that money? In, when we, well, my plan is for our, well, it's too late now for the 14, 15 year, but for our 15, 16, I'm gonna go to local municipalities because we do go into Hazel Township we do go to Freeland, we do go to McAdoo, we do go to Weatherly. I'm gonna to go to their council meetings and speak with them and see if they can give us something towards our local match. And then when I go to the county, well, I can say, well, next year my anticipation is we're gonna need $141,063 because every year it goes up till it reaches 15% and it's capped off. Right now for this year we're at 8%, okay? So it's basically you take 5% of 134, or yeah, 134, and that brings your percentage up every year. So I'm gonna go to them and try to supplement when I go back to Luzerne Why County. Why did Luzerne County not give us the money this year? Um, that's a good question. I, um, I think it all started with this ghost ridership, I think, but I'm not, I'm not for certain for, about that. Now I know Luzerne County this year, um, they had some money in their local reserve and not enough to cover their local match for the state. They needed like 400 and some thousand. They only had maybe 190 some, I'm not sure of their figure. We don't have any ghost writers, right? We, we do not, <laughs> we, we do not, no. no. Um, we, we actually do checks. I ride the bus personally. I have to sit, keep track. We have uh, some cameras on the buses, so we, we are keeping track. And the state can come in any time and, and check our record. Uh, check this lately or yes. audited? Yes, we, we were uh, audited. Uh, they hired a company to do to audit all everybody, yeah. everyone, and I guess they looked at us a few months back. I was in Lancaster at a. Did they give a report? Yes, uh, there was no findings against Hazel. And it was good. It was a good report. Okay, Mr. Sharp, um, at the meeting, because I know that um, there were some. Uh, I remember reading the article in the paper, and there was some contentious uh, comments at the LCT. Uh, wasn't going to get, Hazleton had been getting more than their share for a year or two or that. Um, did, was there anybody up there to fight for, for Hazleton's money to see that we could try and persuade them, coax them, uh, encourage them to give them what they had always been giving us? So they, I was contacted by Bob, was it Bob Blotton, I guess, is he the controller or the Lawton is the is the county is the county manager. Yeah, he called me up and um, about they were going to discuss it at a meeting. So and I was actually at one of our own council meetings. I had something on the agenda a couple months ago. Okay, so I gave him my explanation of everything about the monies, and he said okay. So that was that. That we were I was never contacted again that it was going to be on an on the agenda for a vote. The first time they said they were going to discuss it, I got a phone call from a girl up at the up at the courthouse. The second time, I got no phone call saying that they were going to vote on it. So you were left in the dark about everything that was going I, on up I there. I was in contact with a, with a, one of the um, council and... Um, well, it was never known that they were going to vote, no. It came up for a vote, and I think I was at the meeting right after that, but... Right. No, yeah, I was at the meeting after that, not before it that. Wasn't, but, it wasn't clear what... what but I, I think it was unanimous, too. Right. Um, Even our people didn't is there something there. in the future that we could expect that maybe uh, they would reinstate some of this, though? Well, uh, because if if they if they they decreased and decreased, uh, it would seem as though maybe we would hope that eventually there would be some kind of redistribution, whether it be at a lower amount or whatever, but there would be some kind of redistribution to the LCTA, to Hazelton, etc. Can we anticipate something like that? I'm, Are you foreseeing anything? I, I'm hoping that my understanding is, like I said last year, they didn't give it to LCTA, but yes, this year they did and didn't give it to us. So next year comes around, maybe we, it'll be, it'll be Hazel, Hazleton will be our turn. Maybe you should start lobbying that or maybe send them a letter saying, yeah. listen, yeah. we expect okay. next year right. to, to, be, to be reimbursed. Okay. Because we will I think it was. I think it wasn't because yeah. we wouldn't join. You know, maybe, maybe it, what you it, could it, do I, is include that audit from the last uh, audit that they did and say, listen, we we have a, a great program here. We have a clean program. We don't have any problems. You know, you, 
and you're not giving us money and you're giving uh, your ghostwriter right. program money. I, I don't think it has anything to do with us not merging with them in the, in the past, but as you brought up before about the study that we're involved in, a lot of this study has to do with airport and rail is the big, big thing with this study. It's not transit buses, I should say, isn't the big picture of the study. It's rail and airport up in the Wilkes-Barre area. Transit just kind of bus falls into the yeah. whole big, yeah. the big scheme. But like, like Mr. Sosa, like you said, this, um, this study, we're not obligated to do anything with this. It's, it's, right. Right, it's just to see where things are at. And, and, I, and I believe that after the study, they will see that us merging to, in, as to one, there's not gonna be any savings from Hazleton. Uh, and, and, and I understand that, but I do think that there needs to be, and uh, I've spoken to others in other communities about it. I do believe that we need to have a, a more of a working relationship between Hazleton at the lower end and Wilkes-Barre and maybe even Pittston. Uh, and the reason why I suggest that is because, number one, there are people who shop, there are people who work, there are people who go to school uh, from the Wilkes-Barre area to Hazleton and back again. And um, I know that you run buses up to Wilkes-Barre. I, yes. I, I know that. Unfortunately, right now, most of them uh, are, are set up to go to the Mohegan Sun. Because that's where one of the that's where one of the great stops is. We, if we can work something on out, and and this is, I, I've got I've got personal interest in this because I think that the the that we've got a large community of young people here that are are capable of paying for. And, and I'm getting into specifics, and I apologize. I'll, I'll stop this real quick. But we've got people that can afford tuitions at, at many institutions of higher learning in Wilkes-Barre, but they can't afford to live there. And buses would be a great way. So I do think that there are reasons for buses, for work, for school, for everything that would be of a great help. And I would encourage you to pursue that with your colleagues in other areas. We, uh, just let me add, um, this past Monday, we were normally going to the mall, up through Mountaintop, uh, the mall in the Mohegan. Yeah. This Monday, we started going into the square of Wilkes-Barre also. Yes. So um, we, we've had quite a big people asking about it, and um, we started doing that. This, this Monday was our first, okay. our first run. And also, I, I have been working with um, LCTA, and what we're doing is we're accepting transfers from their bus company and ours at our same rate of 50 cents. So we're, we're accepting their transfers and, and they're accepting ours. So we are working together right. in, in that respect. The more that we work towards education and jobs and everything on else to make public transportation available to everybody, I think the better off we are. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Oh, I, I have a Go question. Ahead. Go ahead. On here it says there's no less than 100 34,346. Is there a cap that that could go on to? Up to 15%. Up to 15, so, so there is a cap. It's not going to. Okay. Okay. As long as there's a cap on this. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, that's it for our resolutions. Uh, comments from the audience? Sylvia Thomas from Hazleton. Well, you haven't heard from me for a couple of months. And I'll have to admit, it was because I felt defeated, like we weren't going to get anywhere with the cameras on Alder Street. And so far, it looks like I was right. But I'm not quite, a, I'm not a quitter. I have to keep fighting when I know I'm right. Alder Street is getting worse and worse. It was so dirty in front of that coal miners pub or whatever it's called on 3rd and Alder Street, I called one of the local politicians. And they said they would call City Hall. Two days later, it was cleaned up. Two weeks later, it was just as bad as it was the first time I called. So I called the uh, politician again. Two days later, it was cleaned up. 
Now, is that the way we have to live? We have to call politicians and take it upon ourselves to see that a mess is cleaned up? That's supposed to be the city doing that. We don't have those cameras yet. Why don't we have those cameras, Chief? Yeah, go ahead. You can answer that. Go ahead. Go ahead. It took less time to rebuild Broad Street than it's taken to put 14 cameras up on Alder Street. Now that's a lot of nonsense. Well, last yeah. night I was in. The, I was in. Uh, I went to the children's closet tonight to work for an hour, and one of the ladies there said she lives on. 11th and Alder Street. She had to call the police at 3 o'clock in the morning last night. Three shots were fired. She doesn't know if that was in the bar or out on the street. Alder Street is getting worse and worse and worse. I'm not the timid type, but there's some characters up there that I'm afraid to look at. And somebody is going to get shot, and I'm afraid it just might be one of those innocent angels who walk with their hand holding their mother or in those little strollers. And I am not gonna wait. I'm, I'm having a meeting with the Crime Watch of Alder Street on the 27th. I, have, I wrote a letter to the editor. Well, I just mailed it on Friday or Saturday. And in it, I'm asking the mayor to come to that meeting. And if he can't come to the meeting, to arrange for a meeting in City Hall. I'm inviting everybody here to come to that meeting. And if, uh, if we don't get those cameras by then, I'm going to the ACLU for help because our rights are being denied and our lives are being put in, in danger. My one sister keeps telling me, don't get involved, those characters are tough looking. And he, she's right. There's sometimes I feel like I'm gonna get shot in the back, but I, I just can't stop. Now we need help and we need it now. And we need those damn cameras because I told that politician, if those cameras were up, they could even see who's making a mess on those steps. Now, we were promised those cameras. The money was there. You people okayed it. The only one I don't know of is the mayor. I want him to speak to us. So please come to the meeting, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Dee. Give me your mic. Okay, there's a couple issues. First of all, you talked about the parking, and since I'm downtown, I see it. But Rather than turning to the city engineer, there's a much cheaper method to see what downtown looks like from an aerial point of view, and that's Google Maps. And you can see how wide the streets are, and you can circle the areas you want to uh, have the parking. The parking study that you want to look at, a lot of things have changed since then. They got rid of the parking lot that used to be by the railroad. That went away and we have it replaced by that one by can do, and we lost a lot of spaces there. And then there was a couple other buildings that have been knocked down that have been used for parking, and a lot of the businesses have left. So I don't think the parking study will give you that much benefit as much as an aerial map would. Yeah, the, the only reason I suggested that was not that that would be the replacement for, but at least again, you have a watermark to start with. And to give you some idea of what they had suggested, knowing that you have changes that have occurred. Uh, I don't think that it hurts to have that, even though I agree with you wholly, that things have changed. They've changed quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Okay. Next thing is, I was listening to the fact that we have policemen retiring. And I have a question, you know, they're talking about we have to buy a vest and all the other equipment. What happens to the equipment that the policemen had to begin with? Like what happens to their bulletproof vests? What happens to their guns? What happens to a lot of the equipment that they have? Because I can't really see replacing a gun when if one retires, that gun should go back into the department. And the same thing with a vest. It's not something they take home with them with retirement. Pardon? Well, how about guns? Do they have expiration dates? We just replaced all the guns just recently. Okay, next thing is uh, you were talking about grants. Our city engineer seems to be writing grants all the time and charging the city without council even knowing it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had the thing with that jet being brought in 
and what have you. And I actually think it's a good idea to get a grant writer working on commission rather than paying the city engineer. And then the last issue is when you're talking about uh, using cell phones for parking meters, don't you have to get a special meter head and who pays for that? That's something else you have to consider, not just the software to run it, what it costs for the hardware, which would be your meter heads. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and, uh, and good evening. I'm Larry Collum. I live at 1410 Terrace Boulevard in Hazleton. Before I begin my short uh, presentation this evening, I'd like to say thank you publicly to two city employees who worked and helped me greatly, Mr. Mike Welfing and Mr. Ron Wick, without which the success of the project that I tried and started would not have been, would not have been accomplished. A few months ago, uh, would have been in April, let me back up just a little bit further. Uh, about a year ago, I decided to purchase a magazine locally known as the Panorama Magazine. In doing so, I moved the business back into the previous building that it had been in, that it had hold, been holding its meetings on, in on uh, 32 East Buttonwood Street. There was a building located in the back of 32 East Buttonwood Street, which is a 3,900 square foot warehouse. We wanted to make use of that warehouse facility uh, for some useful purpose and to create new business within the city, which I'm absolutely certain that this uh, august body uh, would agree with me that entrepreneurship in the city is what we really need. So I decided to, uh, to see what we could do. I, went to, I decided that, uh, that I would try to get the zoning changed to use it for auto sales, a lot of car lots in town, auto repair and detailing with emphasis on the repair and the detailing because there are a lot of, a lot of dealers in town. With that idea in mind, I went to the city zoning office and I spoke with Mr. Ron Weck, who informed me, Rich Weck, I'm sorry, Rich Weck, who informed me that the building was not zoned for exactly what I wanted. That I would therefore have to go in front of the zoning board in order to get permission to do what we, need, what we wanted to do. This I did. We went to the zoning board, the zoning board met, and they unanimously voted to say, yes, this is a great idea, go ahead and do it. Whereupon, we began trying to accomplish this. There is where our story sort of takes a, a back seat. We went to get our city license, pay the fees and so forth, and were advised that, oh no, you cannot do this. You must hire a design engineer and have the building designed to do what you want to do. Well, at that point, I shared with the folks that we have no intentions of even changing one nail in this building. Therefore, we don't need a design engineer. Well, Oh, yes, you do. I then attempted to show them a copy of a drawing, which I have here with me, that was used to approve the building four years previous for a storage facility. This drawing was not acceptable. I then hired a design engineer from Wilkes-Barre, uh, and I have the drawings here with me, to draw what we thought the Benish Company wanted. In my 3,900 square foot building that would have no employees in it other than one, would have no customers in it at all for the foreseeable future, we were being required to build not one, but two fully capable ADA bathrooms, one for men and one for women that didn't even exist. When we shared that with the uh, appropriate persons, they looked, they looked upon me as if I had a, a, a second head. This is what the rules say, you must have it. You also must have all kinds of fire equipment in here, you must have lighted exit signs, you must put in all kinds of uh, emergency lights, you must put in slam ha uh, slap handles on all the doors. And I said again, 
we don't have any employees. We don't intend to have any employees. It doesn't make a difference. It's a 3,900 square foot building and therefore this is what's required. Well, at great expense, we went and had the designs done. After having the designs done, came the next surprise to our, to our dismay. Again, I went back to the city hall, to the appropriate office, presented my plans, and said, now, can we get moving? Well, no, you cannot. You now must pay us $250 for each department of which there are four to review your plans. A cost of $1,000 just to review the plans. I certainly, after I uh, picked myself up off the floor, I was just about, I was in almost total shock. I said, the city is looking for entrepreneurs. We want business to come to our community and we do everything we can to send it down the street. A little bit of history. In the past 27 years that I've lived here, I've built and moved businesses to this community. I built what was formerly known as the Presto Lube on 309, which is now the Valvoline Instant Oil Change, at a time when that was the Van Blargen building, an old gas station that had to be completely torn up I had to completely start from ground up to build that building, and I didn't have one problem with the Hazel Township on getting that done. It went right through. I moved my family trucking company from the state of South Dakota to this area in 1993, moved it uh, into a building that used to be um, a trucking company on 924, that at one time was a farm implements company in, 19, in about 1984. It was a John Deere company or something. I moved a, uh, a 25 truck company to here that, uh, that was in all, all over the country. And uh, again, no problems. We fast forward to uh, 2014 and we want to do something as simple as repair vehicles, or detail them in a building that has existed since 1930. We want to make zero changes to that building, and we run into every stone wall that one could even possibly think that exists. It would have continued that way had it not been for my having seen a document that was laying on the desk of, the, of where the office is that you get your license from, that was a license, that was a permit that was given in 2010, authorizing, authorized by the Barry Isis and Associates Company, that the building would be, could be used for storage. This was in 2010. Little did I know that a storage facility under the UCC allows you to repair automobiles. I learned all of this after I had expended about $2,500 that I didn't even need to go there to begin with. We received absolutely no assistance, no advice along our way from the office that I'm speaking of. We received nothing, but we did receive great help from Mike and Rick. Without them, it wouldn't have worked. And I now have the license and the occupancy permit, and we're now operating. And I'd like to say thank you again to Mike Wilfing and Rich Weck. And uh, if anyone would like to see my plans at the end of the meeting, if you'd like to see them, I'll show you. Uh, if not, thank you very much for your time. Questions? No, I was just... Larry, you're, I know you're saying, you're, we had problems with, your, your problem is unique. I've heard it from many people. They've had many complaints about uh, the engineer and we've been trying to put our, we're going to put that out for bid the UCC. What a wonderful idea, which, Mr. President. Uh, which has been 
spit out all across the state. Our mayor has said it's professional service. We disagree with them. It should be bid out. It's not a professional service. And we want to bid that out and hopefully uh, get someone in here. And what it might mean for somebody is lower fees uh, and, and somebody maybe that'll work with uh, people that are trying to bring a business instead of chasing them out. But that, that's the mayor and his engineer, and that was totally his pick. And the, those problems that you had, you know, with uh, our engineering firm, you should direct those to the mayor, and maybe you should send a letter to the editor explaining, you know, your situation and what happened. Well, Make perhaps so. Aware. Perhaps that would be an appropriate thing to do. Uh, I might also ask this body who has the approval authority for approving fees in this city? Is it the mayor or is it this council? I think it's this council myself. It's, it's, yeah. it, it should be the council so who approved, that sets the fees. So who approved $250? Set fees, but, but, but the, the engineer has set some of their own fees that I think are, uh, are Onerous at best? How about the word onerous? Would that work? $250 per department, four departments. $1,000 just to review the plan. It's only one page. Larry, I agree. And that came from the engineer, right? You, you that got came from the engineer. From, uh, okay, well, that came from the engineer department that, that I had to go do all of this. And, it, and in final analysis, none of it had to be done. That's the, that's the real irony here. That's, that, was the that all he had to do was explain the different rules that were in place. We thought the best thing we could do was to ask the zoning board to do the things that we thought that we might someday want to do, which seems to put, I heard it a little while ago, this puts the horse in front of the cart to my way of thinking, but it did not. It only made the matter even worse because, and, and, and even, in, even, even in one sit down meeting, I can demonstrate for you and illustrate for you that we received absolutely zero assistance, zero. Even the design engineer that I hired disagreed with the method that was being used and said, there's no reason why this man should have to have two fully capable ADA bathrooms in a building where there are no employees. That is the problem that you are facing right now, and, and I'm going to say it. Pardon we're talk, me? We're talking about people who are in charge right now with very limited scope and knowledge of what it is that they want to do, and, and you have become, unfortunately, the beneficiary of that, and you saw it for yourself. Uh, thank God that it, you, 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 you are at least able to open up right now. But in, these are some of the problems that this city, unfortunately, is is turning people away from business. We Plenty are, of we, them. We need I'm, to be a business-friendly uh, town. Others. We are not. And, and thank you for at least persevering and staying. We appreciate that. And, and, and we will and try you. the best of our ability. As you can see, we're trying to remedy the situation. It's not easy. Well, I would suggest to you, and Mr. President, you just, you just brought it up, that most of the time, it's at, least, it's at least at my experience, that if we don't have our own engineer that we can afford to pay, that by putting it out for bids, we would then get the best services available at what should be the best price available. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that $1,000 to review a one-page one plan is ridiculous. Could we could we all agree on that, Mr. Bass? Do you think we could agree on that? We definitely can agree on it. I mean, I, and I, I, everybody knows here that I that the people that run, you know, that are in there are no favorites of mine. Um, thank you very much, and thank you for saying so. I was, <laughs> so I was just wondering if we were. I mean, there, there's thank things you. that have been done, and people that I've talked to, you know, that are that have gone through the same thing you have, or worse. Well, Oh, much and, worse, I think. You know, and it's it's absolutely, you know, terrible. And I will I will share one other thing with you that that kind of brings this whole thing home, and then I'll end mine. And I'm not sure if it's true. So please, Chief, if this if this is not true, 
I would like for you to just, you can just say so because I'm not, I don't want to create enemies here. But the gentleman who came to tell us what we needed, a, a, two, a week or two later, he came back and yes, let me admit, we had been moving into the building in anticipation of getting started. We were doing things. He decided that we were actually open for business, which we were not. And he decided to write me a citation for $100 for operating a business. Now, this gentleman who wrote that citation is not a city employee. He is a contractor of the city. And when I asked him, where did you get the authority from to write this citation? He said he got it from the chief of police. I doubt that that's true. a comment, but could it could but it could go for a question also. It's hundred percent true. It is true you gave him permission? Absolutely. How does the contract employee get permission to write citations? Was he the engineer? Was it the engineering firm? He's the he's the BCO. He's from the Binish company. Hmm? He's, the he's the BCO. BCO. That, he's referring to the BCO okay. to enforce the code. Okay. Well I disagree with that wholeheartedly. And uh, um, and, I'd like, and, I'm, and I'll, I'll gladly go on record saying that, uh, that any contract employee has no right and no authority to write any citation. And uh, that's the way I feel about it. Any other questions or comments of me? Thank you. Thank you for coming, Larry. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Norman Tarantino. A uh, couple things. Um, my, one thing I've been working on, as I addressed to council last time, working on doing a report on the condition of the sidewalks in, in the city, and I've taken over 200 pictures, haven't got a chance to get my report completed, which I apologize to council for not having it completed by today. But I've taken over 200 pictures, I stated, to document some of the problems that we have on the city sidewalks. And in the course of doing things, I've run into about four other people who use scooters throughout the city. And even in certain locations, I've, because I have a three-wheel scooter, I've been getting stuck and going off the streets. And one of the things I have a picture of, and I can show the council later, is to like to know why there is a pad like you see in the cutoffs in the middle of the street at the corner of Broad Street and Club 40 Road, where there is no sidewalk. And I understand that some of these designs that were made to Broad Street are based on studies that are possibly 15 to 20 years old. And why weren't these studies updated, or why didn't this, the, I heard that the, even though this is a state project, the state is claiming that the mistakes were made by the city by not updating these reports. And that's what has me kind of confused as to whose fault some of these mistakes are, that these cut, cuts aren't being made in the proper locations, and there are certain cuts where there are drains in front of the cuts, and the drains are becoming into, uh, are in disarray. So these are some of the issues I just wanted to bring to council. I know you guys got a lot more problems with the city, but I just wanted to bring those up and get the report completed to you guys. Um, a couple of other quick excuse, questions. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Hey, Mark, folks. could you please, I can hear you up here. Okay, please, thank you. Outside, please. Go ahead. Yes. One of the things, you're talking about the codes and uh, grants. I want to know why does the city get a grant for recycling like um, Hazel Township just got one from the state for around uh, $4,000 and are we getting any type of recycling reimbursement from the state or are we are not even applying for or being covered for something like that like the township just received? Because I think that's something we should be getting. I we usually get a grant every usually year get a for grant recycling. For about we'll 10000 We'll check on it. Because I was surprised I didn't even know that the state did some type of matching grant when I saw in the paper that Hazel Township got the $4,000 that they just got normally from the Normally speaking, we get about $10,000, do not we? And normally yeah. for $10,000, it we goes into uh, recycling bins. I think they did get one like this that. year. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think so. We'll check on it for you. We'll get that information. Great. I'm trying to stop like I can't read my own writing sometimes. Um, just. Uh, I guess that's everything for today. I appreciate it. I will talk to you guys Thank soon. You. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. I can't get up. Just you can speak from there. That's okay. fine. Uh, your, na your, name, your name and address for us, please. Justice Baker Street. Talking about Alton Street. The other, it was one week ago on Thursday at 7.30 a.m. I'm a great walker. I have to.
for health reasons, so I was walking down Alder Street. I don't know if I should say this, but that empty, vacant parking lot by Lenny. You know, there's a right across the street. There, across the street, Lenny. right. I turned to my left, and I did not have my cell phone. I would have called the police, but it would have been. In, when I tell you the story, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. In the back of the parking lot, I almost slipped. They were having oral sex. 62 years old, I have to come down, walking down Alder Street and turn on the parking lot, and they're having oral sex in the back ward on the lot. That needs to be addressed. Did you call the police, or did you He didn't call? have her cell phone. Uh, Mr. Monday, okay. July I know. Home, they well, done. hopefully Whatever once... They were doing, Hopefully, once we get the cameras, which That's what I'm saying, those cameras, I almost I've, flipped. Is there a nuisance bar ordinance in the city? The bar yeah, that. Wasn't yeah, that. Yeah, this was outside the bar, though. This wasn't there. Was in that but, empty parking lot. But uh, towards more to the we're, alley part. We're know, gonna the we're gonna work and push to the to get the cameras, and I think the I cameras will help. I know. Sixty-two years old, I have to look at that coming down all the street. I know that's terrible. Unbelievable. There is becoming, um, and and I know that. Um, I'm not quite sure how to put this. I'm sure that, that uh, the chief is aware of this uh, already, but there is more activity of that type of nature, unfortunately, occurring on Alter Street than there ever has before. Um, and I'm sure that uh, if, if, you know, one of the things that, it, 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 it's certainly a problem, and I know because of where I live as well. Um, I think you can see the same, uh, uh, people perpetrating, not necessarily the acts, but you can see the same people hovering around Alter Street day after day after day. Uh, and these are some of the things that need to be addressed. Um, you know, you're talking about a whole section. I know you've talked before about James Street. I know we've talked about Locust Street. I know we've talked about that quadrant in there that, that has become problematic. Uh, and and um, I know that the chief has, has limited resources, but I would encourage uh, the uh, chief, if there's anything that you can do to, to um, monitor, especially all those, those individuals who frequent, um, and, and I mean, I, I see them sitting on the coping uh, on Second Street on a daily basis. I see them sitting on the coal cracker uh, stoops on a daily basis. And you can watch the, the deals being made. You can watch the, the deals being made for, unfortunately, excuse me, but, but sexual favors. You can watch it. Uh, you can't, you, not every time that you're gonna see it. Unfortunately, this time you did. But, but th that has become a place behind buildings, be in parking lots, in cars, and whatnot, that that has become unfortunately um, uh, an area that has become problematic. And it was problematic before, but it's adding to the problems now. It's becoming now out into the public. Mm -hmm. you know. we're, as soon as, well, we're gonna pressure the mayor and the chief to try and work on getting those cameras. Hopefully it won't be too long before the cameras are up and, and hopefully it's gonna solve some of the problems. Mark, do you wanna speak? Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to address, uh, so, well, first of all, I'd like to apologize for being disrupted. I was talking to that uh, gentleman. Um, with regards to his, uh, what his transpired with between him and um, certain administration officials, um, my contention is, and it goes back to what Jeff was saying at the work session about the boards and commissions, like, this is where what that gentleman was saying is a clear example of why you need a planning commission and a redevelopment authority in place. Because last time I checked, an engineering firm does not take the place of a planning commission or a redevelopment authority in the state of, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Last time I checked, maybe someone should get a memo to the mayor and his cousin. And last time I checked, uh, the mayor's cousin, is he still under contract with, uh, is his firm still under contract as the engineering, city's engineering firm? That's a good question. I don't think, I don't think we passed it. And 
renewed it, but the mayor may have done an automatic renewal, so we have to find that out. Okay, another question. As far as the stormwater appeals, uh, is the mayor now a district magistrate or a Commonwealth-appointed judge or elected judge? Because he's now saying that ordinances are legal or not legal. So now not only is he the mayor, but he's also a member of the court. I'm going to take care of this one because I got my letter on the 14th. Mm -hmm. And uh, the simple fact of the matter is, is that it says the city of Hazleton. There's no signature there. Now, I don't know who reviewed this, and I don't know uh, 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 who here got their letters or who didn't. But the fact of the matter is, is that I put in that I wanted a formal hearing. So I, I dropped the note off today, again, asking when will I get my formal underlined twice hearing, mm -hmm. okay? I've got questions. And if you read the newspaper article about it, they can't even keep straight a, a stormwater management plan to a storm fee, okay? I'm not arguing the stormwater management plan. I'm arguing the fee. I'm arguing the makeup of the fee. I'm arguing uh, uh, the, the publishing of the fee. I'm arguing the dedication fund versus the general fund. Has that I'm money been spent? all those things Has that there. money been spent? That's another and, question. And that's a good question. Now, you're talking about, uh, and, and, and even right now, it's questionable as to who was investigating and who made these decisions. Was it an engineer, the same guy that wrote him on up? Is it the mayor of the, of the city? Is it the bank that you paid it to? Is it, is it other groups of people that the city has blamed and said, oh, you, you get this from, from or this group or that group? Who's the simple the fact, appeal? yeah, who, who really has the right to hold the appeal? And know what? Uh, uh, the simple fact is that none of us have been asked to vote on anybody to create a board to handle the appeals. So the simple fact of the matter is that there is no appeal process right now. And, and, and I, you know what, I, Jeff, or, or excuse me, Keith, I don't want to put you on the spot over here. Please accept my apologies before you even start. I, I think you even mentioned that you were misled on, on some of the, the, what the, what the stormwater fee was when it was coming on out the last time this came up and we were talking about it. So nobody, but nobody really even knows. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, did you guys ever, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not, please understand, I'm not, I'm not trying to take a shot. Was there ever really created uh, a, 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 an appeals process? Was there ever created a, um, a fine? Was there ever created a, a, a methodology as to if you don't pay this, here's going to be the surcharge, here's going to be all this stuff? The city keeps on saying, I got another bill. I got another bill. That's all I got. Well, the general well, answer to your question, since you're going to ask me all those. No, 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 um, I'm not I, asking. I'm just saying, you know, I, I don't recall that in the Well, fees. I mean, I don't have it in front of me, and it's probably been about a year since I read it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to be able to answer your questions no, 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 right no. now immediately. I, and I'm not trying to put you on and the so, spot either. But what I'm saying yeah. is that I believe that you felt you were even misled on, well, I mean, on a lot of that stuff. There was supposed to be a dedicated fund that was supposed to And it's supposed to be a so, dedicated yeah. fund. And you know what? Where is it? Where's the dedicated fund? Tell, show it to me. Show it to me instead of going into the general And getting fund. back to the appeals. And, 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 and I'm not, you know friends. what, we can argue this one for all night. But this the leads me. The simple fact of the matter is that they, they don't have it, they don't have it right. Yeah, and the simple fact is, you know what, answer me and give me my formal hearing. Yeah, but whether it's this uh, situation for the stormwater or like that gentleman, he, he said himself that he was never given a formal appeals process. So... I mean, I would ask the city government to tread very softly here because you're not giving due process, which is a constitutional right. Thank you. I asked for a formal hearing. As far as I'm concerned, my civil rights are being violated. And also, uh, going to what Mr. Sharp was saying about the uh, transit funding, as I also go to the county meetings, um, Yes, it was voted down unanimously, and Mr. Lawton gave, uh, presented to the county council saying that the reason behind it is because there, there's a sufficient reserve and that they were overpaying the public transit for many years, and that was their 
And then Mr. Urban, uh, Councilman Urban was saying that, well, why should we give a match this year to, to an entity that's not part of the county? So I'm voting no, and then everybody else followed suit. So that's what happened at that meeting. So just wanted to, you know, set the record that's straight. Martin's recommendation. Yes, that's, and also Mr. Sweats, his, the budget and finance. Uh, okay, thank you. Yes, so yeah. I just wanted to okay. clarify thank that. Thank you, All right, thank thanks. you. Thank, thank you. you, Mark. Go ahead. John Homer Hazelton. First of all, my heart is going out to you that you're trying your darndest to get things going. I'm on your side all the way. Uh, if I put, I, I, there is a, a polite request that I do like, would like to make right now. Uh, I believe it was you, Mr. Councilman Bast. Uh, you told me that it was Ill illegal to um, hire a, a controller. Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't believe anything unless I see it in writing, so if you could uh, look it up and then show it to me, I would appreciate it. Okay. I, I, because I, I, I will, I, I will not believe a thing from, until you show me in black and white. That was a, the opinion from the solicitor. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. One quick question. Go Go ahead. Ahead. I wanted to find out, if, when you pass an ordinance, is there a time that the mayor has to veto the ordinance or do the ordinances become law after that period of time? 10 days. Ten days. So basically anything you passed at the, press, the past council meeting, if it wasn't uh, sent back to you at this time, law. it is law. Yeah. law. That's what I wanted to find out because that wasn't clear as to what the time frame was because you're passing all these great ordinances on, I know a lot of them are being ignored. I just wonder if they were trying to be, uh, you know, be, uh, desk vetoed by not being enacted. That's what I was... Just wondering. And one other thing, since people bring up about the bars, isn't there a ordinance on the city books already regarding nuisance bars and something we could try to clause? Also, there is complaints that could be made and filed with the LCE regarding some of the actions that are going at some of these bars and take the licenses away if we went and worked with the LCB on some of these establishments. That would be something that's, for that's us something to we investigate. Should look at. Yeah, you're, Thank you're you. right. We Thank should you. look at that. Because I know you. we've had them though, in some of the bars I worked at some of the times we had a fight with LCB codes on different things and it's something that you should get with and meet with the LCE and try to work on uh, addressing some of the situations with them. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Oh, and one more thing, they have got to go. <laughs> yeah, okay. you're right, John. Okay. <laughs> they, they did go. We they, don't have they're them. They're not here. Okay, oh. comments from uh, council... Uh, Keith, would you like to make any uh, thank you everybody for coming and staying throughout the meeting and um, and uh, just to explain a few of the the reasons why I wasn't here last time is because I had a conflict with with school and um, that that was one of the reasons why there were a couple meetings that I have missed um, I did ask this meeting to be changed about a month prior so it was supposed to be last Tuesday um, I asked a month before I emailed everyone, never heard anything back, and then two weeks after that, so it was two weeks out, I sent another, or no, actually Jeff emailed me um, right away and said that he was available the 19th as well. I was just trying to push it back a week because I had final exams the um, last week. And um, then I sent another email out, and the only person I heard from was Jean, who said that she unfortunately could not switch it because she scheduled um, everything around that meeting date but then Dave had an issue a week ago prior to the last meeting, so then they switched it. So I'm glad to see you made it here, Gene. Um, and that's, and that's w I mean, no, it was because of Dave. No, it was because of you as well. Um, so I mean, when, you, when you talked about before about you know, not being able to communicate and stuff, um, there's one pretty good example where I, I tried to reach out and you asked if I, you said that if I would have asked in, in a time period, I don't know what time period for you is enough because it's not the first time that I've asked, but I figured it was the last time I was gonna have to ask because of school. Um, but I did ask a month out before the meeting. So, um, anyway. Okay. And I know that you're gonna come have some kind of crazy comeback, but go for it, Jane. No, I'm not gonna come back with a crazy comeback. I had a schedule conflict, all right? Unfortunately, David's parents passed away, and that was an unfortunate situation. But it had nothing to do with David. I rescheduled my uh, schedule to accommodate everybody. 
I don't know what your problem is, and I'm sorry for you, and I really am sorry for you because you have a major chip on your shoulder, and no matter how I've tried to be nice with you, you've always come back with an attack or a snide remark. That being said, that's enough. I'm not going to say any more. I'd like to thank you for coming. I'd like to thank you for all your participation. You know, we look forward to you as every meeting coming in and telling us what your thoughts are, what your ideas are to help the city. Uh, I appreciate Mark coming and informing us on what goes on in the county council meetings. We can't all be there. I liked to hear what we heard from Larry tonight because this way it gives us the ability to address these situations. Uh, we had a lot of promising things happen tonight, which I am really pleased about being able to hire a female police officer, not because she's a female, but I think she's gonna complement the force in ways that we couldn't even begin to anticipate. Uh, I'm hopeful that the cameras can get here soon. I'm sure that there's reasons. I know we just passed something with the telephone poles that we had to have permission, but uh, what other holdups there are, I'm not sure what occurs, but you can uh, probably address them to the chief and he can explain what the problem is but the sooner the better. And I'm sure he's trying as fast as he can, but the sooner the better, because I don't think it's nice for citizens to have to witness what you witnessed. Also, Alter Street is a major problem, and I'm reading the paper and I'm watching James Street have being a problem. I'm watching the city, throughout the city being a problem. In the Heights, we had an elderly woman that was punched in the face. We've had cars vandalized. So this is not, and you shouldn't feel that it's primarily one area that's targeted. We're seeing it now dispersed throughout the city, and we need to be vigilant. Unfortunately, you didn't have a cell phone at the time. There's problems that have been on, on um, Wyoming Street, especially in front of the Historical Society, with prostitution going on. And this went on from the time Tommy Gabus was on council because he brought it up. And uh, there's also, if the chief of police could look into a situation with the pay phone uh, in front of th that area, the vicinity of the museum, it seems that uh, they're equating it to drug dealing. So if that could be addressed, I'd appreciate that, chief. And what, once again, I would like to thank you all for coming and for all your participation and your graciousness for the time that was spent tonight. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, thanks for coming. And if anybody's free on Saturday, we have the community day up at MPB. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, first of all, thank you to everybody for coming. But I also want to say thank all of you for your well wishes and your prayers uh, for my mom and my dad. Uh, I appreciate that tremendously. Uh, Please continue. Uh, I know where they are already. I need them now at this point. So uh, give me a helping hand. Um, besides that, uh, Keith, I want to congratulate you on uh, finishing school. Um, that's a major task. Yes. I know what you're talking about. Um, besides that, um, for everybody that was here and for what you've offered us, uh, what we agree with and sometimes what we don't agree with. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's it. I just have one or two quick things. Maybe, Lisa, for our next meeting, I want to, and I know I mentioned it, our UCC fees are 2%, which is 1% higher than West Hazleton and Hazel Township. I'd like to lower them to, to be even with them at 1%. If, if anybody has a problem with that, you know, maybe you could speak up, but Maybe we'll I'll have Lisa prepare an ordinance to lower the, our UCC fees to be in line with Seven with ha Hazel Township and West Hazelton. Ours is two percent, and we should be one. Okay. To be even with them, so we'll prepare an, uh, an ordinance for the next meeting. The the other thing I have is uh, as far as the cameras. I remember when I first became a councilman, I advocated for for uh, cameras and. We've done everything we could, and now it's in their hands. I mean, whatever we could do to help, and the quicker they, they get on Alter Street, uh, the, the, the sooner it'll help that area, and I, I think it'll, it'll, it'll make the area a better place. So uh, whatever we can do, if anybody you know, comes to us, whatever council can do, but we allocated the money, 
we did everything, and now it's in the hands of the people that, that do it. And to a point, that's the administration, that's the mayor. The mayor has to do that. And if the mayor is, is, is not doing his job, then it's his fault that the cameras aren't, aren't there. We allocated the money, we, we did everything. But uh, you know, maybe if some people write some letters about the cameras not being put in, and uh, you know, saying to the mayor, where are the cameras, that might help. But with that, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. So moved. Second. Meeting adjourned.